Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back. My name is Sarita. So glad to see you today. It is very, very dark today in Charlottesville, Virginia. The hurricane that was up in the New England area has come down the coast, and with it, all of the hurricane rain. So today is just super gloomy, dark, rainy. Um, I tried to turn on lights in the house, but it is just really, really dark today. So. I apologize for that, but that did not prevent me from going to Bath & Body Works and picking up my um, buy online, pick up in store order and doing a little bit of shopping. Um, as you well know, they had a $13.95 candle sale a day or two ago and I very wisely and cleverly kept my 25% off coupon, 25. Um, I did not use it on the bad candle day drop or whatever that was a couple weeks ago because I just, I just thought there might be something new coming down the pike. So I had 25% off, applied that, got all these candles for about $11. I think it was $11 and one cent. And I got to pick up the Christmas candles because I waited until the second day of the sale and the Christmas candles came online. So I'm a very happy girl. I went into the store and I ended up of, cause I bought a ton. I think I bought, well, I bought 10 of them cause it was a little over, no, I bought 12 of them. Um, yeah, 12 of them. So it was a little over a hundred dollars. Um, I didn't, when I got into the store, I returned two of them, but I exchanged them for two other ones that I discovered in the store. So I ended up getting all of those candles. A few candles that I did not get is number one, Luminous, which is doing a soft launch right now. It looks like this. Um, my store didn't even have the three wick candle. It only had single wick candles and like some of the body care. It's doing a soft launch right now and is going to do like a hard launch next week. So that was there. I do think that it's a lovely scent, but it is kind of a little bit of a generic mature woman perfume um, that does lean a little like fall like. Um, it, I think it's got some some currants in it and it's a little bit on the fall leaning side in terms of the way that it comes across. And like I said, I do think it's actually quite lovely, but it was just a little too heavy and mature for me personally. So I went ahead and passed on Luminous. Also, there were no, <laughs> there were no crazy blend candles left in my store. So I did not get to get the um, Radiant Red Maple, which I at least wanted to smell. Um, and there was not any of that and there wasn't any of the, whatever that one was, pumpkin spice latte, peppermint twist, mashup, none of that either, which I definitely was not gonna get and really did not wanna smell, but kind of did at the same time in the same way that you wanna watch a train crash. <laughs> Neither of those were in the store, which is probably fine because, um, the Radiant Red Maple one, it just sounds like it's a lot of marshmallow and a lot of apple. And I just don't know that I love that. At least with the marshmallow fireside, there's like some marshmallow and then it's like cut a little bit with the smokiness. I really don't think that apple would be able to cut the marshmallow quite enough for me to not make it be achingly sweet. And I don't love aching sweet. So probably I wouldn't like that candle as much as many of you like it. So it's fine that I didn't get it. Also, as everybody has said, and I do not need to reiterate, horrible packaging as if from a five-year-old's birthday. It really was really terrible. So there's that too which is a minor point because you can put it in a candle holder or whatever. But unfortunately, those two candles were not in the store, so I could not pick those up. However, I want to share with you the 12 candles that I did purchase, um, at least four of which are, I think, brand new for Bath & Body Works. So let's start with the ones that are not new and the ones that have been in the store for a while 
but I went ahead and picked up. So one of them is, <gasps> look what I got, look what I got. It's finally my pumpkin bonfire that I needed to get. And I hope does come out maybe in another packaging situation. Although I'm kind of wondering if that's gonna happen or not because if they're already bringing out Christmas candles, are they just done? Are they done with fall? Is what's there just, is that it? There's not even gonna be like any more designs? Hmm, kinda sad about that because it's not even October and I wouldn't mind some other stuff, but we may indeed be done with even all of the new labels for the fall, in which case this is gonna be our only pumpkin bonfire of the year and I'm really glad to get one of them. <gasps> it's the first time I've smelled it since last year and I smelled it in the store and I thought to myself, maybe it won't be as good as I remember it because I've like overhyped it in my mind. But the minute I smelled it, I said, yes! Oh my gosh. This candle is worth like all of these candles combined. And many of them are quite good. But man, this candle is everything. Um, I was watching Kevin Inanel, who I like a great deal. And he was talking about pumpkin bonfire. This was like a couple weeks ago. And he said that he, in his opinion, he feels as though the Bath and Body Works employees are, um, I think the word that he used was hesitant. They, are, they seem to be hesitant when it comes to promoting pumpkin bonfire. And that has, I think, been the case the last couple years. Um, I, I think I related, the first time that I ever discovered pumpkin bonfire, I went into the store and I was looking for a pumpkin candle and the Bath and Body Works employees, you know how they do, brought me every single pumpkin candle in the entire store and presented it to me. And most of them were just absolute no's for me. This was the last pumpkin candle that they brought to me. And they brought it and like the girls, the look on the girl's face was just like, I don't think you're gonna like this, but maybe pumpkin bonfire. And I smelled it and I was like, yes. <laughs> it's like, like Lucy, you know, when she's like, this is it to Schroeder at the piano. That was me with this candle. And I share with Kevin in and out, like I don't understand why there's a little bit of ambivalence from Bath and Body Works, at least up to this year about Pumpkin Bonfire. Maybe it's just because they think given the particular demographic of people that buy from Bath and Body Works, this is not, it's off brand for them. Maybe it's like, too smoky or something, I don't know. But I'm happy to say that this year, like I walked in the store and you know, today, and the girl was like showing me all the new things and then the next thing that came out of her mouth, out of the Christmas stuff, right on the end of the Christmas stuff was, we have a couple of pumpkin bonfire, they just came in. <laughs> so I was like, I'm getting one, I ordered it online, pick up in store. So maybe everybody's getting on the same page with this that it is an extraordinary candle and I think it's just main line enough that we're gonna get maybe some better promotion of Pumpkin Bonfire going forward. Fantastic fall candle. In fact, I can't think of too many other fall candles that I can recommend as highly as this one. And that goes for everything about fall. The harvest season, the spookiness, the outdoorsness, it just combines them all. It is so fantastic. For those of you who are living under a rock and don't know, the um, notes on this one are white pumpkin. Um, and I, usually when they put a white pumpkin note in, it's kind of a little bit of an indication that it's a, a very soft or subtle pumpkin smell, even more subtle than it usually is. This is one where they say white pumpkin, but to be honest, I think they could just say regular pumpkin because it is a pretty robust pumpkin note in this candle. So white pumpkin, a bundle of clove buds and glowing embers. And honestly, I think the candle is so much more than clove, white pumpkin, and a little bit of smokiness. It's just a lot more, it's deeper, it's richer, it's more complex, it's just gorgeous. I've talked about this one before though, so I, I've already belabored it far too much. But again, if for some reason you have not encountered this or not burned it, please let this year be the year. 
please let it still be available when you go to your Bath and Body Works store. All right, so that one, and they gypped me because they just gave me a generic lid and I did not even notice it when I was reviewing my order before I walked out of the store. It should have one of these like lovely pressed lids, but it's fine. The lid is not that big of a deal. What's more important is the candle. Look what I found. Yes. So folks, this was an online exclusive and it is Fireside. And I've been looking online and really wanting one, but you don't want to pay shipping. Like it's just, it's ridiculous to pay shipping. And even if they have free shipping over 50, if you're like, if you're in one of those places, then you can't use a coupon on top of it. So if you've got a coupon, it's frustrating. If you shop at Bath and Body Works, you know all of these first world problems. Um, <laughs> so I have wanted Fireside, but as it's an online exclusive, I wasn't really sure if I was gonna have an opportunity to try it. And I don't know that I ever have, but I was so lucky. I was just walking around the store and this little baby was sitting right on top of a shelf just by himself. So it was obviously like somebody bought it online and returned it in store and folks look for these. Look, take a scan of your store for little singles and pro tip. You know how they have those candle holders, those like, you know, the, the tin ones that, you know, usually have seasonal stuff all over them. Check the display candle holders because often they will slip these single random candles they will slip those into the candle holders like the display candle holders especially if they don't have like a whole other stack of that particular candle rather than just letting it sit alone somewhere and looking like we're in a Marshalls or something like that they will stick those in those candle holders and they will be hard to find so Make a cruise of your store before you check out and check all of those candle holders. See if there's not a single of something that might be an online exclusive or might be something that otherwise is sold out but that you may still want. All right, so anyway, Fireside, so happy to have this baby. The scent notes on this one is smoke or are smoked cedar, fresh clove bud and warm embers. So actually very similar to pumpkin bonfire where we have the clove and we have the embers. So obviously some spiciness and some smokiness. And then while this one has white pumpkin, this one has smoked cedar, which is to say that this is gonna be a much more robust fire and wood smell. And then this one is frankly a little bit more complex. And that is exactly the case. Ooh, this is beautiful. So friends, this is a little bit in the genre of Palo Santo for Bath & Body Works in that it is a beautiful, authentic, warm wood smell. And it's one of those dry, warm woods like Palo Santo, but cedar is very similar in that it kind of has that very robust, warm kind of smell. And there's nothing moist or damp or moldy about this particular um, uh, fireside or wood. So it's not necessarily evoking like some sort of outdoor campfire. This is super warm and cozy as in a fire that might be in a house or in a lodge. It's just all the dryness, all the cedar, and yeah, some smoke, but it's not overwhelmed by smoke. It's beautiful. It's just a really beautiful, fairly linear, warm and burning cedar wood fire. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's cozy. Not terribly complex, not even as complex as Palo Santo because Palo Santo has a great deal of like musk on the bottom. This does not. And while it might have a little bit of clove, I'm not sensing a lot of clove here. So upon being burned, something else may come out, but there's definitely more spice in the pumpkin bonfire, more musk in the pumpkin bonfire, but it does have a very strong wood component. Um, a la Palo Santo. So I am really happy to have that one and um, I will definitely be happy to do a review for you. Um, I will link the details below if you can still get this online. 
that's the only way that you can get it unless it's sold out online or you're lucky and somebody has bought one and returned it. Crazy person. <laughs> All right, this is a surprise to everyone, including myself. <laughs> Friends, I broke down. Here's the apricot and the green fig, which is stunning. We have talked about it. Um, I had I had some comments from at least one or two people, um, and I, I believe it was here on my YouTube channel, and they said, I really love this candle, and I actually think you would really like it, because while it smells generic on cold, when you burn it, it actually is really, really lovely. And I said, aw, shucks, <laughs> I'll go and, I'll go get it on the next time that I go to the store. So while part of me did not want to pick this up because really upon it being smelled, although I am getting more apricot right now than I was before. Before I was getting mostly just coconut and sandalwood. I just got a burst of apricot. I hadn't even opened this up like from my online order. Ooh, maybe they're right. Maybe when it's burned, like some of that other stuff comes out. Originally, I was thinking it was mostly just coconut, which it eat, co creamy coconut is listed on the bottom. Apricot, sandalwood, lush fig, and creamy coconut. And when I was smelling it cold in other stores, all I was getting was sandalwood and coconut. And my complaint is, not only does that smell generic for Bath and Body Works, and nobody likes coconut and sandalwood as much as I do, so even for me to say this, it's not only generic, but we've gotten so many coconut and sandalwood candles over the year. Why are we going into fall and you're giving us another coconut sandalwood? You're gonna give us coconut sandalwood in January. We're gonna be off to Fiji again. Like, just give us a second. Why couldn't this be more apricot and fig? And maybe some sandalwood emphasis on the wood. At any rate, it's a pretty gold lid. I went ahead and bought it, and I do think if you've got it, even if the apricot and fig come out, this is a super early fall and transitional fragrance, so I am definitely gonna be burning this up sooner rather than later, but I am very happy to eat my words on this, and, you know, what is it, like eat, eating crow or eating pie, crow pie? I can't remember what the... <laughs> expression is. But I'm very happy to report that my impressions were incorrect or my initial assumptions, presumptions were too hasty and that it's actually a really great candle because it is super stunning in terms of the marketing and the color of wax, etc. Okay, here's one that just came out in holiday packaging for the holiday season. I see I've got a little... I should have noticed that. Um, just the label got scratched up a little bit. So we've got kind of this like hammered hologram kind of motif. It might also be a little reminiscent of a pine cone. I'm not really sure. At least from afar, it definitely has more of just like a textured metallic hammered situation. I don't dislike it. Um, I think it's fine. I actually really like when they do this like texture thing. So like the wood grain pattern that they've done for the fall, I really like it. A lot of people don't, uh, and God bless, like different strokes, different folks. I personally like it when it's a fairly neutral wraparound texture. That being said, I can't say that it screams holiday season <laughs> more than frankly, any other season. <laughs> so, I mean, it does have like a little snowflake up there, but eh. anyway, pistachio toasted vanilla. This candle came out last year to great acclaim and applause, so I'm not surprised that it's back. Um, for me, I'm not really sure that pistachio toasted vanilla is a, is a holiday, like, taste or smell, but then again, it's actually fairly versatile and it could go for any season, right? I can't even remember what season it came out in last. I, th I think it came out in like January or February or something like that. No, am I wrong? I think it did. So this could come out at, at, at any time for sure. Um, 
And I remember smelling it when it came out, but I never purchased it because I adore pistachio. But for me, I just thought it was a little generic and it was a little too gourmand and I don't do gourmands. But now that it has come out again, I do believe I'll try it. Because as I've said, I am willing to make uh, exceptions for nuts, hazelnuts, walnuts, pecans. <laughs> Why not pistachio? I'm not a super like warm vanilla kind of girl, but you know, at least there's no like caramel in it or you know, something like that. And definitely no bakery notes. So we're gonna go for it. I really like it. Yes, there's a very toasty component. And rather than it being toasted vanilla, it is really more of a toasted nut kind of smell. And yes, there is vanilla. There is something in the background that is just a touch body care. And I'm not really sure what that note is. It, it might be amber, I'm not sure. It might be amber or it might be sandalwood. I should rejoice over it because it's what makes this not quite a gourmand. I'm, and, it, and it gives it a little bit of intrigue, frankly. Even though it's a fairly standard body care note for Bath & Body Works, whatever it is, amber or sandalwood. But it does make it, it gives it another dimension. We'll put it that way. It gives it another dimension. If it was just the vanilla and the toasted um, pistachio, it would be fairly linear, not very complicated, however lovely it might be. With that slight body care after smell, as it were, it's a twitch of something that is, like I said, just giving it another dimension. I'm not even sure if that dimension necessarily goes well with it, but it's a different dimension and it's fairly strong on cold smell. So I'm really hoping it performs well and I'm hoping that when I burn it, I fall in love with it as much as many of you have. So I went ahead and picked this up. This is a new collection and there are various other ones in this collection too that I thought about getting ended up kind of returning that it was a falling flurries which is nice but it's very body care um frozen lake same there was a eucalyptus one i'll 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 figure out what it is maybe a frosted cranberry um i'll figure out what they are and make sure that all the pictures are going up right now as i'm talking that's what they are but for the most part all of these are just repackages of scents that are actually fairly familiar, even more familiar and more longstanding than this one. And for me, they're not special enough for me to bring home, at least in this first wave of holiday candles. So I went ahead and passed on them. Okay, let's talk about the four new ones. The four new ones, oh, actually, before we get to those, I bought a, a couple of the White Barn ones. So here's one that I bought, which is Autumn Woods, and you can't see it a whole lot because of the darkness and also because of the way that this light is, but this is, it's a little bit of a, of a pearlized green, which is kind of nice. Autumn Woods, which is dark walnut, English lavender, and white amber. Walnut, lavender, and amber. Yeah, I mean, all of those are things I can get behind. This has kind of a generic body care, but kind of like a men's body care. It leans, it leans herbal, it leans musky. Um, it's all of the usual suspects. So I picked this up, but I was kind of on the fence with it. And I know that it's been out for a while. I don't think it's special, but it is kind of things that I like because I tend to like the more masculine leaning stuff. I don't think it's quite as, I don't think it's fresh enough and innovative enough for me to really like enjoy it in a maximal way. So to be honest, I may end up returning this one, but I got it because it was a weak moment. <laughs> and I also got this one, which is a new-ish. So this is another white barn, but weirdly it like is not 
pearlized and I don't know if you can tell but it's got like a, an adhesive label right here which I don't know why that is why they couldn't have just like I mean this is an adhesive label too but on this one they've done a better job of like die cutting it all the way around whereas this one is just kind of like a translucent it looks a little phoned in the way they've done this however it's fine it's fine um cedar and suede and um while this is one has been around it hasn't been around a super long time or it like came out once and we haven't seen it since then so um and these are things that i really like and it was highly recommended by the gal who was at bath and body works one of the sales associates so the notes on this are soft cedar warm incense and velvety suede so we have suede incense and cedar i'm a sucker for all of those and it really does smell lovely and frankly a little bit holiday-ish too so the incense that they've used here, I would say there's a little bit of cinnamon in it, which is not a usual component for incense. So the cinnamon is leaning it a little bit holiday-ish, but you definitely have some like clove in there and some more incense-like spices as well. Yeah, it's very holiday. I mean, this is a true like holiday spice kind of situation, but definitely... Um, definitely on the more masculine it's a very warm masculine kind of um accord of spices but i do think there's just enough cinnamon and or nutmeg in it that makes it kind of a, a holiday masculine scent um and yeah there's some really beautiful musk really beautiful um and in terms of the yeah yeah and cedar and cedar definitely cedar it's a musk and a cedar i'm not sure about the suede but i would say that there is kind of a soft there might be a soft light leathery component but it doesn't keep it from being a fairly sweet candle. And the sweetness may be coming from a strong hit of vanilla, to be honest. It's a creamy, it's a very creamy masculine kind of candle in the same genre as like coffee and whiskey, for instance, but just a little bit more spicy than that one. It's lovely, but it's a little on the light side and so I'm not expecting great things upon it being burned. Um, and I know people who got cedar and suede in the original iteration, and it was plagued with um, lightness as well. So I will probably keep it and burn it because it is such a lovely fragrance. But I am concerned that I'm not going to be able to fully recommend it on the basis of performance. We shall see. All right, last four candles are brand, brand new. And they are in this amazing snow globe, winter wonderland um, kind of effect. Really beautiful um, and somewhat translucent. And the wax is shaded and tinted a little bit as well. So it's really lovely. I have four such candles and there are four in this collection. And to my knowledge, all four of them are new. So here's one that, and I think they just have like generic silver lids, but that's fine because this is a lot right here. Um, so this first one is Cocoa Roasted Chestnuts and it looks like this. Look at that, really pretty, huh? And once again, there's the wax color, this kind of light blue color. The notes on it are roasted chestnuts, cocoa powder, and vanilla woods. And at first I was not gonna get this. Ooh, I like it. So the very first thing that hits your nose is that cocoa note. And for me, it is a true cocoa powder. It's like a, a powder and it's dry rather than like um, a, a warm or milky chocolate. It's dried for sure. And it's, it's, 
a fairly like subdued and sophisticated like coconut powder. It's not like an artificial cloying candy kind of cocoa note, nut. Uh, I mean, cocoa note, <laughs> note, which I actually really appreciate because I don't love chocolate candles. <laughs> it's too gourmand for me. I don't like candy candles. And I can't say that this comes across as like a candy kind of chocolate. I mean, this is a very rich, unsweetened cocoa powder kind of smell, but it does have a lot of vanilla in the candle, which is very sweet. But you, you definitely, that cocoa note is dry, sophisticated, and unsweetened. And then you have some like really interesting, like more musky elements underneath it. And this is where it goes not as gourmand. I don't know that there's a true nuttiness because like cocoa powder is very, it's derived right from that cocoa nut. And so cocoa powder already kind of has a little bit of a nutty dimension to it that is often lost once it becomes liquefied or sweetened as in candy. So there is like a little bit of a nuttiness coming through with the cocoa powder itself. But in terms of chestnuts, I'm not getting like a deep roasted component and I'm not getting a deep nut component outside of that cocoa. There's just this beautiful, and I think it is a vanilla musk underneath the whole of it. <laughs> That's so, like very Tonka bean like. And there again, you're gonna get some like with tonka bean, you're gonna get some soft nut overtones. So for me, this is very much like a dried coconut powder with a tonka bean like musk underneath it. And I'm here for it. Yes, it goes a tiny bit personal fragrance, but not like overkill. It doesn't go generic. It doesn't go generic bath and body. It's a really intriguing scent. And one that the more I smell it, the more I appreciate it. At first, when I got that cocoa, I was like, no, this is not good. But then when I let the fragrance finish, oh wait, oh wait, that's interesting. So I'm really liking it. I don't know, you have to really like Tonka bean though. And you really have to like some musk <laughs> to like this candle. And I think the people who are like candy lovers, you know, or wanting something that really smells like roasted chestnuts, I think this is not quite it. Although it's a lovely and intriguing fragrance. I'm here for it. Um, and so I'm pleasantly surprised. Second one in this collection is Winter Pear Forest. Look at that. Ooh, all green, all green. It's apropos too with pear. Yes. And guess what? Oh, look at that wax. This is a green color. This one I'm not sure that I like, but I might. So this is more of your fruity pop kind of fragrance. Um, the, the notes on this are winter green leaves, snowy pears, and hint of cypress. And yes, there is some cypress, but I do think that it's closer to a hint. I am grateful for that though, because otherwise you are getting kind of that juicy pear note that you got in like the pear Riesling candle and in that, that um, one that's still on the floor, one of the cocktail ones, the like, the, oh, what is it? It's a pear candle. And I can't honestly, I'm blanking right now on what that cocktail pear candle is, but it's like a sparkling pear alcoholic beverage. Very similar pear note here. But whereas that pear note is super like aggressive in that cocktail and in the pear Riesling, here it's more subdued and a little bit drier and it doesn't have that effervescence to it. So I'm liking it a little bit better. 
even though it's a touch fruity tooty for me personally, that pear note, but I'm grateful for the cypress, which kind of comes out around it. Wintergreen leaves. Yeah, I think there might be something kind of botanical and green, kind of leafy, that's in with that cypress. And so I appreciate it. It's a green, green, green candle. Green leaves, green pear, green cypress. So it has a lot of integrity in that respect. And I do think that there is enough leaf and cypress to kind of cut the almost synthetic, like, pear note that is in here. Oh man, it almost goes a little soapy body care, but just doesn't. It it just stops just on the other side of, of that, which I'm grateful for. I, I'm interested upon it being burned, I really want those cypress and leaf notes to pace out with the pear and not allow the pear to just fly and like overwhelm. It's not my favorite of the four, um, but I am cautiously optimistic. All right, this is far and away my favorite. Look at that stunning magenta. Birchwood Orchard. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry, with all the shadows and everything, I'm not really sure if you're getting like quite the right shade here. There, maybe that's correct. Okay. It's like a light orchid kind of color. Lavender, lavender orchid. All right, so the notes on this one are white birch trees, fresh apples, and hint of clove. So really just apple spices and birch trees. Yes! Ah, <laughs> uh, this one goes, it's like this one in that it goes right up to the line of going into body care and just doesn't. Ooh, it's a lot of birch. <laughs> And I love it, so much birch. And yes, apple and clove. But I would say mostly birch. And this, there's a lot of sweetness coming from the apple, but I would say it's a little bit more of a subdued apple rather than like a juicy apple. Subdued apple with some spices, particularly clove. Now, everybody is saying that this is a repackage or at least a very close dupe of um what was the one that came out in the naturals line clove and applewood applewood and clove wait i think i wrote it down applewood and clove that's what it was it was in that naturals last year and it was a kind of a late addition to the collection in the fall um and it was a very good candle i think but i missed it i didn't get that late release and so i didn't end up getting applewood and clove but it was it was very successful. So I think this may be, since we didn't get Applewood and Clove in the Naturals line when they brought out their fall, I believe this is possibly the repackage of it. And I don't mind it. I don't mind the packaging. I don't mind, I just don't mind it. I do love the Naturals line in terms of their aesthetic, but this is fine. It is lovely. And it is really kind of a nice transitional from the fall area into the holiday area. You could frankly do this very nicely in early November. Some apple pies for Thanksgiving and that one. Really beautiful. All right, and last but not least, here is the last one and it is Spiced Citrus Grove. And it looks like this, it's a taupe, which I'm not sure that I love, but it's a look and I respect it with some gold accents. Man, a gold lid would be real nice on this one. I may move the lid from one of those other ones. Yeah, it's interesting. This is another one that like I smelled and at first I was like, oh, I don't think so. I don't know that Bath and Body Works does pomander terribly well. Um, so the notes on this one are ripe oranges speckled with cloves, which is i.e. pomander, cinnamon, and nutmeg. That's it. So orange, clove, cinnamon, nutmeg. 
the dominant note here is orange and it is, I said ripe oranges, it is a ripe orange. It is not a dried citrus peel that you're smelling. I mean, this is like a juicy Florida orange juice kind of ripe orange. And it is all of that orange, all of it, maybe even a little bit of a sugared orange juice kind of smell, but still fresh and authentic. And then it has clove and the clove is, man, the clove is super authentic. I mean, you can almost, I mean, there's just, be, the orange and the clove note here are so fresh. When you're smelling it, it's almost as if you're putting your nose in a bowl of cut orange and actual cloves that maybe you've even cut a little bit. And man, they are just so, I don't even know, bracing. It's a bracing clove. My father, because he's an old man and he's like, it's an old world thing. Whenever he has like a toothache, rather than think about going to the dentist, he like bites a clove and then it apparently numbs his whole like jaw. And then he's like, this is fine. I'll just, I have a toothache, so I'll just bite the cloves, which is whatever. It's not about that. But <laughs> this smells as bracing as you like biting a clove in your mouth. And I don't know if you've ever done that, but <laughs> that is something that you're going to feel the effects of for probably over an hour. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, so I would say it's just super, super juicy and super clovey. And for some reason, I'm just not sure if it works. I think there's something in that orange juice component with the fresh clove. It's just kind of a strange note, despite its authenticity. But then again, as with that cocoa one, when I let the fragrance finish, I'm like, actually that's, that's quite good. It's quite good. It's quite authentic. It's just the initial smell that's like, what is this? I'm gonna have to reflect on <laughs> why this candle is off-putting given its authenticity, its freshness, and then frankly, it's, very limited notes, why it is that there's just something in it that seems like it might not be okay, but in fact, maybe once it's burned. These are $26.95, by the way, these particular ones. Um, the white barn ones are $26.95 as well, um, and so is the hammered kind. Um, and then obviously these ones are the cheap $24.95 ones. My friends, I know it's been a long video, but there you go. I'm really happy. I'm excited about all these candles. Many of them I probably won't burn for a little bit because I'm actually just starting to get into my fall candles and I'm starting with like early fall. So we're doing like apple, pear, you know, we haven't even gotten into like deep pumpkin yet. <laughs> let alone any of these transitional scents. But most of these, which is very smart for their first wave here of holiday candles, many of these are transitional holiday scents from fall to holidays, rather than just being like straight up fresh balsam. So I um, anticipate burning them a little sooner than like deep December. So there you go, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna at least list all of the candles here. And if I have time, I will link them to the website as well. You should be able to get them either online or at least very shortly in your brick and mortar store. So check that out um, and definitely wait for a sale. Thank you, my friends. I'll see you in the next one.